Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to discuss the world's longest game played in the chess history between Magnus Carlsen vs Ian Napomniachtchi from the FIDE World Chess Championship 2021 played on 3rd of December. It's the 6th round, the 5 games have been ended in, ended in a draw and we have the 6th battle. Magnus is playing with white pieces and Nepo is playing with the black pieces and Magnus starts out the game with 1d4. Nepo plays knight to f6. Knight to f3, d5, g3, e6, bishop g2, bishop e7. This setup is considered one of the most safest setup in this position, which is also known as the Fianchi to bishop. Short castle, short castle, b3. The idea is to develop the bishop via b2. So here Nepo played the move c5. Takes, takes, and played the move c4 in the position. So here already normal move looks like to play the move bishop b2 which is a fine move but Magnus played the move c4 which is the best move. After c4 what's happened? Nepo simply captured the pawn on c4 and after d to c4 one of the most common moves for all the beginners is to simply recapture the pawn back. But this is simply a bad move because now black is having white is having weak pawns on c4 and a2 because the c4 pawn is an isolated pawn and black is already having a pretty fine position. So what Magnus did was he first played the move queen to c2. Now the pawn cannot capture another pawn because the bishop is hanging. So first Nepo played the move to queen e7 defending the bishop. Nepo can't defend the pawn on c4 that's the reason he played the move queen e7. And after queen e7 it looks like now Magnus will capture the pawn on c4. But at the place of capturing the c4 pawn he first played the move knight to d2. Now, allowing Nepo to recapture the pawn on b3 and gaining a pawn advantage. But it's not a, it's not a practically good move because after c into b3, after knight into b3, the bishop is attacked, so the bishop must fall back. And here already knight to d4, the bishop is extremely strong, attacking on b7, the bishop cannot move because the b7 would be hanging. The knight is uh, ideally placed, the bishop b2 is a good move, rook c1, rook d1. And the, if you try to continue the game via knight d7, already knight b5 attacking the bishop, the bishop fall back and after bishop a3, black is already losing an exchange. So this is exactly what happens if black captures the pawn. So that's the reason black first played the move knight c6 and here Magnus simply captured the pawn with the knight. b5 by Nepo and after b5 attacking the knight, a move that comes to everybody mind is to play the move knight f to e5. Why not? After knight f to e5, thinking that it's a double attack on the knight on c6 and if black captures the knight on c4, we can happily capture the knight back with the knight, attacking the queen and followed by capturing the c4 pawn and black, white is already a pawn up and materially up. But the point is after knight to e5, black is first going to play the move knight to d4, attacking the queen and once the queen move, now simply bishop to b7. The bishop is simply defended by the queen and black is already having a perfect position and black is already even slightly better. So this is exactly what happens if white plays the move knight to e5. So that's the reason Magnus played the move knight c to e5, knight to b4, queen to b2 and now bishop to b7. And already in this particular position I feel very comfortable with the black pieces and there seem to be no problems in black position. After bishop b7, Magnus continued with a3 attacking the knight. The knight fall back. We have knight to d3 attacking the bishop. Bishop to b6. And now we can already sense the advantage of b5 because it already creates a square for the bishop to go to b6. After bishop b6, I already feel the position is dead equal. So bishop to g5 attacking the knight and here rook to d8. So like many beginners in the position would like to play the move h6 provoking white to capture the knight but it's a bad move at the place of provoking your opponent just keep on developing your pieces by rook f to d8 like nepo did bishop takes and after bishop takes a fine move can be to capture with either of the pieces in the game we had g into f6 but i also feel nepo could have simply captured with the queen so that after queen takes pawn takes Indeed, black is having a bad pawn structure, but it's on the king side and uh, the pawns cannot be captured so easily. There are no really weakness for black in this position and black is having 
all his pieces developed, nicely placed, and the game should be ended in a draw. So that's what I think. But in the game, we have g to f6, we have rook c1, knight to d4, developing, centralizing the knight, I would say, knight into d4, and now first capturing the knight on d4, attacking the queen, queen to a2. And I guess if the bishop, if the rook would have been on c8, uh, black can maybe play something like bishop a6, keeping the bishop, but here there is no chance for black to keep the bishop pair in this position. So Nepo decides to trade the pair of bishop, queen b7 check, king, king to g1, and now playing the move queen to e4. And I already feel, practically speaking, black looks better because black is having two pieces centralized already, having more space on the queen side, indeed having a bad pawn structure on the king side, but it doesn't really matter that much. So I already feel the position should be round about even, but practically I think black is having good chances. So after queen to e4, Magnus played queen c2, not allowing Nepo to play the move rook to c8. a5, expanding on the queen side, I would, I think it's a good idea. Rook d1, developing the pieces. King g7. Now finally, as all the pieces are developed for black, black is trying to place his king at the most ideal square on g7. Rook to d2, the idea is to play rook to d1 or maybe queen d1. And here, after rook d2, Nepo played the move rook to c8, which is basically he gave up two rooks for the queen. I think it's a bit of a committal decision. Maybe Nepo could have first played the move something like f5 and after queen to c7, then only he can play the move rook c8 so that he gained an extra move up of this f5. Then after takes, 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 now he can even play the move h5 or even e5 followed by f4. So it should be a good idea because black gained, gained an extra move in the position. But here, uh, after rook to c8, white simply captured the rooks and got this position where white is having two rooks for a queen. And uh, material wise, I would say white is a pawn up, but position wise, it's a dead draw. I, I would not say dead draw, but it's an even position. So after rook to c8, we have queen to d5 by Nepo, attacking the b3 pawn. We have b4 and here a4 by Nepo, a good move I would say. Uh, keeping a weakness on a3. e3 attacking the bishop, the bishop falls back and here we have h4. Obviously if uh, Magnus cannot capture the bishop because the queen, the rook is simply hanging. That's the reason h4, h5, king to h2 and now uh, Nepo played the move bishop to b2. A much better move would have been to play the move queen and queen to b3. Bishop to b2 was simply a bad move. Uh, because after queen b3, the point is after queen to b3, after something like knight into e5, f into e5, rook to c7, because you can't really defend the h3 pawn now. So after rook c7, which is the last hope for white, after takes takes. King g6, prophylaxis, because rook into f7 is still going to come. Rook f7, and now we are going to play the move queen b2. And the point here is, white can play the move e4 covering both the squares and trying to create some checkmating ideas with the rooks. In this position, white black is having the only move for, which black is having the only move that can save the game for black or else white is going to win the game. You can try to pause the video and try to think what could be the move in this position for black. Okay, so the only move for black that saves the game in the position is to play the move queen e2. Now what's the idea? The idea of queen e2 is there are two ideas first black queen is covering the g4 square and the second idea is that black queens also attacking the e4 pawn at the same time if at the place of at the place of queen e2 if black plays a move like a3 now white is completely winning because of a very strong move which is g4 in the possession after a g4 which is kind of a force move or else white is going to have an upper hand by rook g7 pushing the pawn and black is going to we get checkmated. So after g4, black must capture the pawn and here check, 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 check and finally check king to g3 in position. And after king g3, what's the idea? If you try to again push the pawn, already check, check. And this time as the f4 square is already covered, both all the squares are covered up, check and it's a checkmate. So that's the idea. So going back, in this position after a3, 
after if black plays queen e2 and if we have the same position in the in the game that's exactly what happened in the game after king g3 here i can actually capture the pawn on e4 in the position so that after h5 check king g5 rook to g7 check black is not going to play the move queen king f6 but black is going to play the move king f5 which actually is a drop white must repeat the position or else black is going to win the game so that's exactly what happens after queen b3 but nepo played the move bishop to b2 still because it's a very uh very i would say very complicated variation bishop to b2 uh indeed you cannot capture the bishop because the knight will be hanging then so rook c5 found by magnus attacking the queen and the pawn and the, again another pawn so we have queen to d6 uh because if you try to move your queen somewhere a piece is simply hanging up so the queen must remain on the d5 to attack the knight and the rook at the same time so here we have rook to d1 which was a bad move the best move for white would have been to play the move rook c2 attacking the bishop so that after bishop into a3 knight to f4 attacking the queen and the basic point here is to simply jump in with the rook which black cannot stop and white is completely winning in this position uh it's game over for black because rook into f7 is coming and the moment black king enters into the h8 or G, uh, f8 white is having this knight g6 that's the whole idea going back uh that's the reason bishop into a3 is already a blunder so rook to d1 played by magnus magnus wasn't really able to find this rook c2 move which was the best move bishop a3 rook b rook b5 and here we have the move queen to b7 attacking the rook the rook move and here we have the move e5 by nepo i i don't i don't see a reason why nepo did not capture the pawn on b4 with the bishop because after knight into b4 white is simply hanging a rook and black is completely winning so the position should be after rook c1 bishop e7 the pos this position should be a draw but that's not what happened e5 was played in the game rook c2 and again uh nepo can capture the pawn but again he played the move queen d5 but this time we have rook to d2 uh and now both the rooks are protected so nepo can't really capture the pawn queen b3 uh rook to a2 now attacking the bishop you cannot capture the pawn after bishop b4 white is going to play rook d to b2 after takes takes white is going to capture the pawn and he's going to have four pawns against four pawns but as white is having two rooks white is the one having the practical advantage uh that's the reason after rook a2 magnus uh nepo played the move e4 attacking the knight but knight c5 attacking the queen and i have to uh, take stakes we have queen b3 obviously black cannot capture the knight because of it takes stakes so white is a pawn up and uh, it's going to be a winning position for white so we have queen to b3 keeping the pieces rook c2 bishop to f8 knight to c5 attacking the queen and the pawn knight d3 and eventually after some move let's go on ahead uh the there were a lot of maneuvering happened in the game king h2 and finally magnus in this position decided to sacrifice the rook for a pawn and the bishop and here if black captures this uh white is having a very pleasant position a dominant knight on d4 and the knight rook can simply sit on f5 white is having a perfect position that's the reason black first tried to capture the h h4 pawn attacking the king and tried to open up the king by h4 rook a4 bishop here the game went on and here magnus slowly progressed into the game bishop bishop to b6 putting the pawns on the dark squares trying to limit the bishop rook a1 rook e4 defending the pawn and slowly and steadily trying to get something in the position both the players were maneuvering the pieces if queen h2 check king f3 and there are no more checks so white is having a perfect fine position so going back that's the reason queen e, queen d5 maneuvering happened in the, between the pieces and here we have rook into f5 and finally we have rook into f7 giving up the rook for again a pawn and the bishop so we have finally we have this position which is a draw according to the engine where white is having three pawn rook and a knight against black pawn and a queen 
So material wise, I would say white is a pawn up, but it's still very hard for white to convert this game. So maybe this game would be in most likely end in a draw. Queen e4, uh, queen e5 check, rook a6 in here, but still it's extremely hard for black to continue the position. But many of the spectators uh, commentating were already thought that the game would be a draw. Uh, knight f3, check. There is a long wait still. We are on the move number 95. King to f6, check. Knight f3, Magnus again uh, maneuvering his pieces. And let's see. Rook d1, check. Knight d here. And finally, he pushed his pawn on e4 on the 110th move. Queen to h1, check. Rook here, king moved. And here, Nepot side to check and capture the pawn. So this time, now we have a completely simplified position. Queen versus rook, pawn, two pawns, and a knight, which is, says white is a pawn up. But still, it should be a draw. Rook f3, but white is the only one playing for a win because black can't really win this position. Rook here, knight g3, king f3, check, rook e2, check, uh, rook e2, check, check, and finally push the pawn to e5. Check, king f3, king h4, check, push the pawn, rook f7, f5, knight, queen g1, knight g7, and this position is somehow it's completely winning for white. How? Because now white side is pretty simple. Uh, now white wants to simply push this pawn because both the squares are covered by the pieces. And um, so in order to get a draw for black in this position, black needs to keep checking the white king. But white can't do so. Black can't do so because after keep giving checks, black can say white can simply play king g5, king h6, king g6, king, king h7, and king g8. And once the king reaches on g2, the king is extremely safe, followed by push push and white is completely winning the game. So this is exactly why after knight g7, you won't believe this, but Nepomniachi simply decided to resign the game and we have the champion of this match, which is the Magnus Carlsen. So the sixth game where uh, Magnus went on to win the game after 136th move. So this was the game, the longest game played in the world chess history, which is the 136th move. In, uh, the previous record was something like 120 move, which ended in a draw because of the opposite color bishop. But we have a result where white simply won the game. So this was a fantastic game played by Magnus Carlsen and Nepomniachi. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope that this video might have interesting, might have been interesting for you guys to watch this video. If it was, then make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel. I'm going to come up with these interesting videos like this. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.